Well, we've got uh, something new coming into the lab today. My first piece of uh, Keithley equipment, a brand new 2280S 326, uh, that's the 32 volt, 6 amp uh, low noise power supply. I'm not much on unboxings. Well, let's take a, a little closer look at this. It comes with a uh, tilting bale, which is very sturdy. You have to pull out both sides, and then uh, you can rotate it around. But it's quite stable right now uh, with that locked in. Then on a, uh, a little closer look at this thing, what we have out here are a couple of menu buttons, a hard power button right here. This is definitely a mechanical button, not a soft button. Front panel USB, some soft buttons. Got more menu options, a rotary knob. It is not clickable, by the way, but it has a pretty good feel, probably optical. I would expect that in, in a device of this type. Basic keyboard interface, your output button here, which I believe glows blue, but we'll, we'll look at that. And a couple of small indicators on the upper right for uh, remote and LAN. Now, remote may indicate that you're locked out on your local controls. And then we have uh, banana jacks on the front. Uh, these will take both. Uh, these will take uh, shielded banana jacks as well as uh, you can uh, put in a small wire in there. Oh, it probably would take 18 gauge, but probably not. Probably not 14. Now let's take a quick look at the back. The back panel contains oh, all the usual stuff, um, such as a GPIB, USB. Um, B connector, full size, uh, LAN with uh, LXI capability, a little digital I.O. connector. This is not serial or TTL up here. This is uh, some digital I.O. pins. And then you have on the rear panel, uh, we have uh, six pins for uh, out rear out and rear sense pins. They come from the factory pre-jumpered. To the sense lines so you don't have to do, to do that unfortunately it does uh, this does not have front four wire sense capability on the front panel it's only uh, through the back now down here you need to uh, verify that you're on the right voltage setting for your country and the indicator is very small uh, it did come pre-configured to US 120 volts here in the States, but you need to make sure that you check that. And also, please note that you may need to change the fuse depending upon your country's line voltage. So pay attention to that before firing this thing up. Speaking of which, so as I said, let's power it up. Why don't we do a uh, quick check and we'll uh, see how long that takes. I'll have to look and see what kind of operating system this thing's running in the background. Um, it could be uh, Linux or Windows. Wow, hey, showing uh, 14 seconds. Pretty good, way faster than I expected the, uh, a device like this to, to perform. So really quick, like that. This is a really wonderful display, large digits. Everything's just really impressive. Let's uh, see how easy it is to um, just set some voltage. Um, so right now we'll click, we'll hit VSET. We'll type in, I don't know, 12.123. Hit uh, enter. And all right. So we hit the output. The output comes up. I set it to 12.123, and it's 12. It is reading back 12.1227, so uh, not bad. Uh, so on other power supplies, I've noted people comment about having a soft power button, and this is a truly a hard power button right here. That's it, it. Really does connect through all the way and turn off all the power. We can see that right here on the kilowatt. And this has been toggling between 0 and 1 because that's just uh, transient noise. Let's go and uh, see what we get. And here we are. Booting up. We're at about uh, 240 milliamps of AC line power. And this is on, of course, the uh, US uh, 120 uh, volt grid. 
and we're up we're running again steady 24 or sorry 0.24 amps and drops off there we go zero Keithley's provided a uh, nice hard boot button and they can do that because this thing boots very quickly about 14 15 seconds so let's try it out uh, let's program a voltage and um, we'll watch and see how close it is let's program in a simple 5 volts and see what we get let's turn it on it is measuring 5 triple three so 0.3 millivolts high and that is measuring uh, 0.4 millivolts high so uh, pretty close I think we're within the uh, number of counts on the range spec we can also try it with a little bit of current so we'll fire up a programmable load we'll set the load currently the uh, load is connected from the positive output here to the input from here back out to the load and it's just an, uh, a simple array 32 uh, sorry 3732 a nothing really fancy there uh, why don't we fire it up with uh, 500 milliamps so we've set the load for 500 milliamps it's reasonably accurate let's turn on the output the load is currently measuring uh, 4.991 volts so that's pretty reasonable given uh, going through the shunts and everything load is on and we hit our voltage maximum looks like uh, looks like the uh, current was set to 100 milliamps oh yep sure enough 100 milliamp limit was uh, the default it looks like so what we can do is um, oh interesting so that's how you can set the uh, limit with the knob if you want doing that it's currently setting it via the bottom the lowest uh, resolution but you can just use these two buttons soft buttons and arrow across not sure how clear that is the indication is pretty small right here the numbers are very fairly small on the display however I can read it from uh, three feet away so that's pretty much my criteria for clear visibility of, of digits on things uh, it starts out with the uh, defaulting to the lowest digit and that is um, 100 uh, micro yes 100 microamps so what we can do is uh, just arrow across crank it up to five now what we'll do is just uh, we can turn off that output let's uh, set the current by pressing enter so we'll turn the load on the uh, load is reading 496 milliamps that's what I've set it to this is reading 495655 roughly and up here we're showing 49573 and we're showing 495666 so very close on the readings let's see at what point we can uh, get this thing to trip off into overcurrent we're at 500 milliamps on the load just under that on the Agilent reading and again just under that here on the Keithley they're currently both very close in readings about a hundred uh, microamps off and we're just over our 500 uh, milliamp limit and it is uh, holding a nice steady current as I tweak it around it's holding a nice steady 5 amps or sorry 500 milliamps 0.5 amps very good I had been hoping that this might give me some sort of an audible chirp when it went into overcurrent but it uh, it isn't that chirp is coming from the load so when I go into constant current it it toggles the display here from CV to CC but not really giving any other indication It'd be nice if it had a beep or a, a better indication of when it went into constant current now we can crank this up just a little bit and go for the full well, we should be able to do a full 30 volts so wait uh, I've got to do voltage set 30 
So we're now set to pump out 30 volts at 6 amps and we'll just kind of give it a full power try. And we are pumping out a full uh, 29.997 and we're getting 29.9906 uh, so we're off by 7 millivolts or thereabouts on the or sorry, 9 millivolts on the uh, readings there, but we're going to get some loss in those cables. This has some nice data capture capabilities. Um, we can go into uh, the view. We're currently set at 6.5 uh, digits resolution. You can change the view here. You can uh, view a graph. And in this, um, you can see on the graph the on-off as I crank up the power and crank it down over and over there. It also provides um, in fairly small print down here uh, some min and max on the output as well as means, standard deviation, peak to peak, a uh, whole variety of, of things uh, on this. So very interesting uh, data. There's also uh, a lot of points on the data you can see the how it records these you can scroll through the list with the knob so very nice a lot of great info real quick let's uh, swap out the uh, jumpers on the back that were pre-installed for the remote sense and put it into uh, put it into remote sense mode We're now connected up with the Agilent monitoring the output terminals of the power supply and the power supply's remote sense terminals connected up to the input of the electronic load. Let's see how this behaves. We'll go ahead with the same 10 volt 6 amp limit. We're fired up and you can see 10.003, 10.004. Okay, very, very close again. 140. 50, maybe 200 uh, microvolt difference. Now let's turn on the uh, load. The load is currently set at 1 amp and the load is reading 9.992 volts, so a little bit of voltage drop. Now let's turn it on. Pulling 1 full amp, you see it dropping, drawing a nice 999443. It's reading the meter, sorry, the power supply is reading from its sense inputs 10.003 volts. However, we look up here on the Agilent and what we're getting is 10.0763. So with one amp of load, the Keithley is pumping out, in fact, it's pumping out, oh, something on the order of 76 millivolts in order to compensate for the loss in the wires going out to the uh, load. If we go up and uh, turn the load back on, but instead let's turn it all the way up to uh, six amps. 10.003. 10.004, but up here we're reading 10.457, so we're reading um, oh, an increase of uh, nearly half a volt. So in order to make up for the losses in these wires here, um, the power supply is pumping out an extra half volt. So overall, this is just an introduction to it and showing some of its capabilities to the new Keithley 2280S uh, this is the 32 volt 6 amp model. That's the dash 32 dash 6 32 volt 6 amp model. And we really like it today. Um, it has a very nice uh, display, easy to use, very intuitive controls. And we'll be seeing more of this. It has LAN capabilities, four wire sense, uh, some software that we can put a, try out. And so I'll be uh, doing that next. And uh, this was not provided by Keithley. So just decided it was time for a new power supply, and this is a, looked like a really worthwhile upgrade.